Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. We hope you are able to see us tonight live on Facebook. And uh, we appreciate you joining us here on the radio. Well, so to speak, we're on the radio. Now, we have never done a Facebook Live like this before. So we're going to try to see if we can get this to work. Uh, and there may be some glitches, and we hope you'll uh, kind of stay with us just for a moment until we figure this out. So let's call on our people to see if they will actually uh, come on in to the program. First off, the uh, co-director and producers of uh, KCAL, Denise and Norman Klein. Are you guys there? Yes, and hopefully yeah. you will join us. Uh, Hello, Doug. KCAL. Hello, yeah. Denise. Well, again, we are hoping that this is all going to come out. There's Denise, and I think Norman will join us. And there's Norman. Now we're on the three of us as i uh glancing down at my phone to make sure that we're on. How y'all doing? Doing very well. How about you? Good to see you guys. Yeah. Or be with you. <laughs> this is kind of uh, an unusual thing that we thought we'd try because – all over the past summer, uh, well, going back to April or whenever, uh, we did some Zoom recordings, and, uh, you know, those are just what they are. We record them, and we let them play back, but we right. are now deciding tonight to try to do one of these things live. We are still at our homes, but we're going to try to do it live, and if we mess up, just like if we were on the stage at the theater, we mess up, right? Just like if right. we were on the stage. I just hope everybody's got some good snacks because, you know, our intermission snacks are to die for. So I just <laughs> – <laughs> sorry you can't have those tonight, but Mrs. Dameron was pretty busy, I think. Well, I could use one of those cream horns. Well, while we uh, – before we get started, real quick, because uh, I know people are anxious, at least I hope they are, to see the show. Uh, we had to, again, because of COVID, cancel our fall show, which abs actually was supposed to start tonight. Right. Uh, tonight, tomorrow night, and Sunday. Uh, but the problem is, folks, as we've explained, our theater, you all know how small it is. We just can't get you six feet apart and do it right. But, Denise, we are still planning on doing the live show at the Vineyard. Yes, that is still on as of now, which is October the 31st. Um, some of you have already paid. Make sure you let me know that you're coming. We've got new calls. So the, this is a limited engagement. So there's only 75 seats available and we're getting very, very close to the 75. So 885-5363, call the box office and we'll get you set up. Okay. Right. Call us and up. then if everything goes right, we're going to try to do our Christmas show in the middle of December, but we're going to have to wait. I will sneak in, Norman, a little promo here that we're going to try, cross your fingers, to have some kind of a gospel fundraiser for the Homeless Education Program in November. That would yes, be great. Yes, right there. I enjoy yeah, that. We'll try to get the, uh, get the talent uh, spaced, uh, socially distance approved appropriate excuse me and get those guys up there and do like a telethon like you were saying like uh, yeah. we used to watch and Here, hopefully facebook we can do live. it yeah facebook yeah. live yeah yeah all right well let's let's take time to call in the rest of our group and introduce everybody and make sure that our audience remembers these people uh first off david dameron are you out there somewhere yeah there i am he is. hey there you are <laughs> we want to see you dave yeah, we want to take time to tell everybody, if you've watched our Zoom recordings, uh, David, after we get through recording, he's the one that puts on all that special stuff. The, he's the mix master. The, the, the graphics and all that. Yeah, he's a mix. He uh, he's done, works a lot on that, too, a lot of hours. He gets but the editing, yeah. We're going to give him a break tonight. He doesn't have to do any of that tonight. Uh, now, one thing I'll mention, Dave, is that we are streaming live on Facebook. We cannot do it at the same time on YouTube, but as soon as we get done here, you're going to take the recording and as quick as possible, get it over on YouTube, and we'll put that link out there so people can watch it at another time if they want. Right. Yeah, I will uh, I should be able to do that uh, to get it prepared pretty quickly because, like you say, there is no 
there's no beginning and there's no ending that I have to produce. And then the, uh, the backgrounds and, and uh, picture switching and all those kind of things I, I won't have to do. I'll just take it straight from this video feed and, and put it out there on the, on the YouTube. Live. <laughs> yes. Another thing uh, I don't want to forget too, that if you're watching us live right now, we would love for you to be able to hit the like button or the heart button. We, we would yeah. let us know you're there. Let us know you're there. You can even make comments if you want. We might not see it right now, but we would appreciate it. Okay. Next up, uh, let's see where we got Connie, Connie Royce McDonald. Are you here tonight? There she is. I'm here. Hey, how's things in your world? Everything's good. Thank you. We are glad that you were able to join us. Connie, I think, has been in, uh, I think, all maybe all of our Zoom recordings, but we're glad that she was able to come back and be in this one. What about Susan Clements? Are you down there? Where's Susan? Ah, there she there is. There she is. Hey, I am. Hey. Hey, Susan. Hey, Everything's there. <clears throat> Everything doing all right in your household? Oh, awesome. Everything's Good. going great. Thank you. Good. And I'm sure everybody out there wonders how Eddie's doing. He's ornery as ever, I suppose. <laughs> he is doing very well. <laughs> Good. Good. And finally, Lorette Latham. I think Lorette is here. There she there is. There she is. Oh, <laughs> such a diva. Hi. Hey. <laughs> All right. So, Hello. Lorette. And hope things are going well with you. Lorette's been in a lot of these Zoom recordings. In fact, I think she's been in all of them. So, you know, we've had a good time, guys, doing the recordings, but we just yeah. thought it'd be neat to do something live and at least feel like we're in the presence of those people uh, again. And, and I see that there's some people watching, and I appreciate the fact they are. Well, you know what? You, you uh, were talking a little bit earlier. I do have a little bit of those jitters like before we would go on yeah. stage. And I, yeah, you know, we were all talking here. about that. Here. Because with the other Zoom performances, I didn't have any of that. Well, we were just recording. But tonight I do. So, uh, you know, the funny great. thing, Norm, you talked about uh, you know having the jitters and everything. Um, what I normally do is I take the video, which is about two and a half to three hours long, and edit it down to the half hour. This mm -hmm. is it. <laughs> this, yeah. is, this is it. And I, might, and I might tell people. No uh, pressure. <laughs> well, you know, everybody that watches this is going to know us pretty well from seeing us down at the theater. So they, they, they'll yeah. know we're prone to a little slip here and there. So. Well, and one thing, too, Norman, that we're going to do is we've already decided this is a comedy that we're doing tonight. And since we don't have a live audience, we've decided if any of us – here's something funny we're just gonna laugh so yeah. <laughs> if you hear us laughing on here you laugh along with us we hope you please do it. please do yeah. all right well if everybody's ready here's what we're going to do tonight so that people will know back in the 1940s there was a comedy called easy aces aces and it was about a woman named jane ace and her husband um what was his name paul Paul? Oh, that's her brother. No, that's, that, that's, brother. that's Jane's brother. Oh, what was his name? They just call Ace Ace. He was Mr. Like, Ace. Mr. Ace. He just Ace. <laughs> Mr. Ace. <laughs> well, tonight, uh, David Dameron Ace. plays Ace. Uh, Connie is going to play Jane Ace. Uh, Norman is taking two parts tonight. He's going to play the brother Paul and also a fellow named Norris. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Denise has got Arlene and Mrs. Anderson. Uh, Susan is playing Miss Martin. Uh, I've got a part, uh, Ken and Mr. Wilkerson, and then Lorette's going to do our commercials tonight. We've got a couple of really good commercials for you. So if everybody wants to flip over and uh, everybody get ready, because here comes Easy Aces. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to KCAL's latest Zoom production. Tonight, we bring you an episode of Easy Aces. Jane gets her brother alone. But uh, we'll be right to our show right after this message from our sponsor. Mm-mm. Popcorn and peanuts, a toy and everything. Doesn't it just make your mouth water right now to think about Cracker Jack? You know how those crisp golden kernels of candy-covered popcorn just melt in your mouth. 
And way down near the bottom of the box, those wonderful roasted peanuts that crunch between your teeth. You always save those for last. They're so good. There's only one Cracker Jack. Don't forget to look for your prize down at the bottom of the box. Your neighborhood dealer who sells candy will appreciate your Cracker Jack patronage. The more you eat, the more you want. Brookheim Brothers and Eckstein, makers of Cracker Jack and other reliable confections, Chicago, Illinois. And now on with this episode of Easy Aces. Jane gets a loan for her brother. <laughs> Well, the first thing I want to say is that the leading characters in this story are not fictitious. Very often, I wish to heaven we were, especially Jane's brother. His name's Paul. He's allergic to work. He's the laziest guy I know. And oh, he's obnoxious, too. Paul never shows it, but I know he hates me. I never show it, but I hate him. <laughs> can't even stand the sight of me. I can't stand the sight of him. <laughs> Behind the back, behind my back, he calls me names. Communist. <laughs> Twelve years ago, Paul was in a little automobile accident. He's been collecting ten dollars a month on an insurance policy. If he ever goes to work, they'll stop paying him that big annuity, so he can't work. Paul was lucky enough to has, to have escaped alive, and now he wants to be paid for it, like robbing Saint Peter to pay for Paul. The one I really feel sorry for, though, is Paul's wife, Arlene. They've been married for 10 years, and they've always been destitute. We've been married for 10 years, and we've always been destitute. She never gets any new clothes. I never have any new clothes. And she's too old to work. I never have any new clothes. <laughs> so how do they live? Well, you've heard of people who live by their wits. That's Paul. He lives by his wits. Of course, if that's living, it's only half. The other half is Sister Jane takes care of. Now, Jane and I are the typical average married couple living in the typical average little eastern town, New York City. Population 8 million. Give or take one. Oh, <laughs> if you're going to take one, take my brother-in-law. For that matter, take Jane. When Jane makes up her mind to do something for Paul, she does it. When I make up her mind to do something for Paul, I do it. She is completely uninhibited. I'm completely uninhabited. And her arguments are unequivocally irrefutable. Uh, yes, they are. <laughs> I should have suspe uh, suspected something the day we got married 15 years ago. The day Paul asked if he could come along on our honeymoon. Now, I said no. Jane said... Let him come along, dear. He's never been on a honeymoon. You know, I should have suspected the other night after dinner when Jane and I were sitting around the living room and she gave me her guess who routine. It went something like this. Well, dear, guess who called me up today? I don't know. Rochelle Hudson. No. I'll give up. My brother, Paul. <laughs> How much did he want this time? Oh, he's fine. Arlene's fine, too. Do you know that next week they will have been married 10 years? My, how time flies. It seems like only a year ago they were married nine years. Well, when he told me 10 years, you could have knocked me down with a fender. I said, Paul, you mean to say you've been married to... Now, just a minute. What did you mean by how much money did he want? Who said anything about money? Oh, then he, he didn't want any money. Who said he didn't? <laughs> well, which is it? $200. Jane, I'm not going to give it to him. Why doesn't the guy go out and work? Oh, now, dear, you know there are many reasons. Yeah, and I'd like to hear him. Well. The third reason is because he always... Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. What happened to when in place? Beg pardon? What are the first two reasons? Well, first, because he was sick last year. 
You know, he was just about to get a job when he got the intentional flu. I knew you'd finally come up with the right word. And besides, like Paul says, what's the dollar worth today? Practically nothing. Oh, so he's not going back to work until the dollar gets back to what it should be worth. Yes, 57 cents. Uh, of course. Well, we talked it over, and Paul decided to come to your office tomorrow morning. I told him. Jane, I haven't got 200 bucks to throw away. Are you insinuating that my brother isn't going to pay you back? Oh, 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 oh no, 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 of course not. He's as, he's as good as gone, uh, gold. <laughs> As usual, as in any argument with Jane about her brother, I ran second, paid 280 to place. Because the next morning when I got to my office, oh, my office, I ought to tell you this, I work in the advertising business. Make a nice living, minus withholding and social security. It's a pretty fair job. Of course, Jane always exaggerates my importance there by telling everybody that I'm a big cog in the machinery. He's a big clog in the machinery. <laughs> the only thing I can't stand about my job is, uh, is my secretary. Her name's Miss Anderson. So why don't I get rid of her? She's a cousin of Jane's, twice removed. That is, I removed her twice, but Jane got her job back three times. So now with a score three to two in her favor, Miss Anderson practically runs her office in her own way. I practically run the office in my way. She's a doll, D-U-L-L. -L. <laughs> so I got to my outer office about 9.30 the next morning, and, and I asked Miss Anderson if there had been any calls. Yeah, Joe Davis called. Jo Joe Davis? Who, who's he? What, what did he want? He wanted a date for Saturday night. I told him I've already got a date for the movie Saturday night with Bill. So I gave him Wednesday night. We're going to go dancing. Joe's an awfully good dancer, much better than Bill. Miss Anderson, were there any sideline calls? I mean, you know, for me, you know, about the advertising business? Uh, let me see. I think there was somebody. Uh, who was it now? Um, Isn't that awful? Well, if the thought comes to you, Miss Anderson, will you be in touch with me? I'll just go in my office and wait. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll let you know if it comes to me. I seem to hear some activity. Whew. Boy, I had to go back to the bathroom. Well, there you are. That's a fine thing, letting your brother-in-law wait in your office to see you. Miss Anderson, I don't know where you are, but take a letter. Yeah, okay. A letter to another country and don't hurry back. Gee, thanks. Well, brother, how's the world treating you? Not very often. I haven't seen you in some time. Uh, how long has it been now? Uh, about $25 ago. Paul, would you <laughs> oh, mind dear. taking your overcoat off my desk? Oh, sure, sure, excuse me. Uh, you recognize the overcoat? Yes, I recognize it. <laughs> you gave it to me two winters ago, remember? <laughs> lucky we're the same size, eh? <laughs> yeah, I was born lucky. Yeah. Look, Paul, Jane tells me you want me to give you $200. Is that right? Not give, lend. What's your language? Sue me. The answer is no. Well, now, wait a minute, brother. It isn't for myself I want the 200 It's for Arlene. We have a 10th wedding anniversary next Wednesday, and uh, well, I wanted to get her th something she needed really bad. For $200? Yes. Like what? Well, I'm getting her a tonsillectomy. <laughs> You're going to have your wife's tonsils removed as an anniversary present? <laughs> Why not? It's something practical. <laughs> it's definitely something she wouldn't buy for herself. Yeah, that's it. Well, how about it? Let me have a 200 No. Well, could you make it 100? <laughs> what, are you going to have one tonsil out? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I could pay $100 yeah, down. And get the rest for me later. Nothing doing. I can't afford it. It's not the principal. It's the money. But I'm going to pay you back. I keep track of every cent I've ever borrowed from. I'm sorry, Paul. 
Look, kid, you come to my office and you sit around with your feet scratching at my desk. And I wish you wouldn't be wearing my shoes while you're doing it. Well, with my no ringing in his ears and my overcoat hanging on his back, Paul walked quickly from my office to my home in my shoes to see my wife. Before we look in on this tender little scene, I, I ought to tell you that like the typical average family, we live next door to a radio announcer, a fellow named Ken Roberts. Ken's the only celebrity Jane knows, and every time he comes to the house, which seems to be about once a day, Jane gets his autograph. Oh, Ken loves it. So before Paul got to the house, Ken was already visiting with Jane. Hey, Jane, that's an attractive dress you're wearing today. You do? Thanks. And may I return the compliment and say it's one of my favorites, too. Where have you been, Ken? Long face, no see. Uh, Jane, are you home? <clears throat> My brother. Yes, Paul. Here we are in here. Hello, Paul. Well, sis, I was just over talking to that husband of yours. Just fine. Oh, you remember Ken Roberts, don't you, Paul? Oh, sure. Hi, Ken. Uh, well, Janie, he turned me down. Uh, my brother-in-law wouldn't lend me $200. I've got to have that money, Jane. You've got to help me. Paul, you know I'd give you my bottom shirt. I haven't got $200. Well, what kind of town is this? Isn't there any place a fella can borrow $200? Ken, I think you're trying to say something, but I don't know what it is. Well, it may be an idea. I just act like that when I'm trying to talk because I'm a radio announcer. You know, down at the station, I got this commercial that could probably help you out. Friends, do you need to borrow money? Come to the Security Deposit Bank and Loan Company. You can borrow up to $300 on one signature loan. Every transaction is treated most confidentially. Why don't you go on down there and borrow the money? The Security Deposit Bank and Loan Company, huh? Yeah, I never thought of that. Uh, how about it, sis? Will you sign my note for me? Oh, sure, Paul. I'll go down to the loan company with you. I'll be ready <clears throat> in Sydney. <laughs> we'll be right back with the show after this word from our sponsor. Never been to Security Deposit Bank and Loan Company before? Don't be intimidated by what you see. The bars on the windows can be unsettling. Murray, our friendly security guard, will be happy to show you around. Don't have time to come in or can't make it in during banking hours? Pay for your goods with our counter checks. They're available at the checkout at most local retailers. New car, new house, tonsillectomy, let us help you with our affordable loan rates. <laughs> Home loans available up to $10,000. It's not too early to think about the holidays. Don't forget about our Christmas fund deposit account. Start saving now. Deposit 10 cents, a quarter, or even a dollar or more. You decide. If you make 51 weekly deposits, we will make the last one for you. Then your holidays will be truly happy as you surprise those around you with wonderful gifts. Security Deposit Bank and Loan Company, your friendly bank around the corner. Open weekdays, 10 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Close Thursday. The next time you come to town, stop by Security Deposit Bank and Loan Company. Tell Murray I sent you. And now, let's return to our show. <laughs> So Jane and her brother Paul decided to go to the Security Deposit Bank and Loan Company to borrow $200. All this I didn't know, but as the crime was reconstructed for me later, 
Jane and her brother arrived at the loan company, and Jane, as usual, took charge. How do you do? I'm Mrs. Ace. Well, how do you do, and what may I do for you? We'd like to see some of that money you advertise to lend. What is your name? See some? How do you do, Mr. See some? Uh, how do you do? <laughs> this is my brother, Paul Sherwood. This is Mr. See some, Paul. Uh, how do you do, Mr. See some? No, 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 no. I'm Mr. Wilkerson. <laughs> you said see some. Oh. You said see some. No, Mr. <laughs> see some. I said, what is your name? And I said, my name is Wilkerson. How do you do? I'm still Mrs. Ace. How do you do? And this is my brother, Paul Sherwood, still. Well, how do you do, Mr. Still? <laughs> now, madam, did you say you wanted to borrow some money? Please, Mr. Seesum, not so loud. It says confidential. Are you the confidence man I need to see? No, 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 no. I'm Mr. Wilkerson. I'm in charge of loans. Uh, have a chair, please. Thank you. Sit down, Paul. Now, is this your first loan with our company, Mrs. Ace? Yes, it is. Why? Your advertisement doesn't say experience necessary. Oh, no, no. I mean, have you established credit here? Uh, what is your full name, please? Jane Ace, Mrs. Jane Ace. Mrs. Jane Ace. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? I'm Mr. Wilkerson. <laughs> yes, we've met. And yes. this is my brother, Paul Sherwood. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Seesum? Oh, I've met your brother, <laughs> and my name is not Seesum, it's Wilkerson. Now, how much borrowed money do you want to borrow, Mrs. Ace? Please, Mr. Wilkerson, if you're going to keep talking that loud, I'd rather see Mr. Seesum. <laughs> there is no Mr. Seesum. I'm Mr. Wilkerson. I lend the money. Now, how much do you want? $212.75. $212.75? That's rather an odd amount, isn't it? Oh, well, the 200 is for me. I'm getting my wife a tonsillectomy for an anniversary gift. Yes, and on the way down, I saw a sale on hats for twelve seventy-five. so I thought we might as well kill two birds with one loan, you see? <laughs> yes, well, Mr. Wilkerson? No, just wait, 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 wait. Now, you, sir, you're getting your wife a tonsillectomy as an anniversary present? Uh, that's right. I'm not working right now, and this money will come in real handy. And I'm going to sign the note for him. I see. He isn't working. And you, what, what is your business, Mrs. Ace? Sister to the defendant. What's that? But I haven't got any money to lend him. Well, if you don't have money to lend him, what good is your signature on a note? What good? Well, I don't know who would sign for a person if his own sister wouldn't. And if I'm wrong, I'm not far from it. You're what? Doesn't it to you? <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Let's see if I can remember what happened here. I was sitting here in my office, quietly reading Dick Tracy, when she came in and said she wanted to borrow $212.75. She wants to sign the note, but she has no security. Uh, do you have any charge accounts in any of our stores, Mrs. Hayes? Oh, sure. But I wouldn't want them to know about borrowing this money. Just a moment, please. Let me call upstairs and check on your credit. Uh... Hello? Yes. Miss Martin speaking. Over. Yes, Miss Martin. This is Wilkerson. I have a Miss Jane Ace here. She wants to borrow $212.75. And 
Can you check her credit for me, please? Mrs. Jane Ace wants to borrow $275.75 yeah. over well, two, two, fine seven, confidential. Five. Yeah, that's right, Miss <laughs> Martin. Two twelve seventy five. That's a rather odd amount, isn't it? Over. Well, 200 is for a tonsillectomy that she, her brother's giving his wife for an anniversary present. Uh, testing one, two, testing one, two. Sounded like you said he's giving her a tonsillectomy for a wedding present. Over. <laughs> That's right, Miss Martin. The other 1275 is for a hat she saw on a clearance sale on the way down here. Can you just check it for me, Miss Martin? Will do. Roger. Mm. Mr. Wilkerson, was that coast to coast? What? Oh, well, no, that's our efficient credit system. It'll only take a moment. To, while we're waiting, why don't you look over this application here? Uh, here's the weekly rates. For a loan of $212.75, you'll have to pay back $4.40 a week for a year. $4.40 a week, huh? Mm -hmm. That's reasonable. Oh, there's the intercom. That must be Miss Martin. Hang on just a moment. This must be the repeat broadcast for the West Coast. Uh, yes, Miss Martin. Did you get that? Mrs. Ace is NG. All charge accounts are in her husband's name. He's okay. Over. Roger. Thank you very much, Miss Martin. Thank you. Well, Mrs. Ace, I'm terribly sorry. You're NG. What's that mean? Not guilty? Yes. No, 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 no. It means your <laughs> signature is not acceptable. But if your husband would sign the note, well, we'll be glad to make the loan. So take this application and have him sign it, please. Well, okay, I guess we'll have to do it, Paul. But he'll never sign that note, Janie. Just leave it to your Uncle Dulcie. We'll see you later, Mr. Seesum. So, as Jane and Paul sailed out of the Security Deposit Bank and Loan Company, they waved a fond farewell to Mr. Wilkerson, sinking slowly in the west. Now, if you were a betting man, you wouldn't give a hundred to one that I wouldn't sign that note. Save your money. A few minutes before Jane and her brother got to my office, uh, I had a, a visit from my boss. That would be <clears throat> Mr. J.K. Norris of Dutton, Sutton, Mutton, and Norris. I don't know how he got in there. <laughs> Mr. Norris talks like a copybook. He believes a man's best friend is his motto. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. He's been married three times. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. But in spite of all his corny talk, I like J.K. He's a lonely man who has no children. If at first you don't succeed. Yes, as I was saying, just before Jane and Paul got to my office, Mr. Norris had come rushing in quite pleased with an advertising idea I had thought up for a new account that we were going to handle. Mr. Ace, my congratulations on that advertising campaign for our new account, the Security Deposit Bank and Loan Company. Well, thank you, Mr. Norris. I knew when you and Thompson got together, you'd turn out a great campaign. The two heads are better than one, I always say. Uh, but I did this one myself, Mr. Norris. Uh, yourself? Well, good work, Mr. Ace. Too many cooks spoil the broth, I always say. Yes, you do. By the way, uh, the Security Deposit and Loan Company, uh, people were very concerned about the uh, type of man we're assigning to their account. Uh, they want to be sure you've never signed a note over there uh, or a loan or borrowed any money. Oh, oh, oh no, I, I never. Uh... Good, good, good. Neither a borrower nor a lender be, I always say. Uh, uh, we had one man who borrowed money from them, speculated in the stock market. 
You're not speculating, are you? I heard a rumor you were. No, no, it's not true. Well, that's good. A fool and his money are soon parted, I always say. Hello, dear. Hello, Jane, as I always say. Hello, Mr. Norris. Well, you're just in time, Mrs. Ace. Just fine. This is my brother, Paul, Mr. Norris. Well, how do you do? Well, I'm glad to meet you there, Mr. Norris. Uh, Mrs. Ace, I was just congratulating your husband on a fine job he did with one of our new accounts. Oh, it was nothing, really, Mr. Norris. No, nothing, he says. Don't let his modesty fool you, Mrs. Ace. All right. I hope you're as proud of him as I am. Oh, you are? Yeah, congratulations again, Mr. Ace. This campaign will make you famous in advertising circles. Uh, how about it, Mrs. Ace? Your husband's a celebrity. Oh, oh, no, please, please. A celebrity? Dear, I'm so proud of you. It's like having a movie star in the family. A movie star? Well, I suppose now you'll be asking me for my autograph. Autograph? Yes, that's an idea. Give me your autograph, dear. Now that's carrying a joke a bit too far. But dear, you're a celebrity. I know, but... Oh, go ahead, Mr. Ace. Give your wife your autograph. <laughs> Mr. Norris, it's embarrassing. Here you are, dear, on this piece of paper right here. Here's your pen. I feel kind of idiotic. What is this, this paper I'm... Now, go ahead. Sign your name. <laughs> All right. Here you are. Yeah, this is kind of silly. Autographing something for my own wife. That's it. Thanks, dear. Give me that. Nice work, sis. Uh, what is that paper you gave me to, to sign? Uh, well, Mrs. Ace, uh, let's clear out and leave the big man to his own thoughts. Confidentially, I think he wants to be alone. Yes, that's exactly where I'm going. Come on, Paul. See you later, dear. <laughs> All I can say is, in defense of my simpering self, I have a good alibi. I'm stupid. And I never would have known I even signed the thing if something hadn't happened a week later. Jane and I were sitting around the living room after dinner, and I was doing a little bragging. Jane, you remember the advertising campaign Mr. Norris congratulated me on about a week ago? He gave me a $500 bonus today. Pretty good, huh? Yes, dear. Is that the most enthusiasm you can work up? I thought at least you'd cheer. Yippee, dear. Well, thanks. If you can spare that, maybe this, maybe this will brighten you up. I'm going to take 200 of this bonus. I'm going to lend it to Paul. Arlene does have to have her tonsils out. and As, as long as I can... Paul got that money already. Where? Last week, but I'll tell you what you can do. I said, where did Paul get that? If you want to do somebody a favor, how about increasing my allowance? Where did Paul get the 200? Increase your allowance? How much? $4.40 a week. <laughs> $4.40? How did you arrive at such a round figure? Well... I might as well get this off my chin. Okay, <laughs> start chinning. I'll make it short and sappy. Remember last week when I came to your office and you were a celebrity and you signed your autograph on a piece of paper I gave you? Fine, celebrity, yes, go on. Well, that day you opened a charge account at the Security Deposit Bank and Loan Company. Security Deposit? Oh, no! Paul borrowed $200 when you autographed the note. No! <laughs> oh, yes. 
and today they called up that Paul missed the first payment, $4.40. And he's going to miss every other payment, and I'm going to have to make it good. I should say you won't. What kind of wife do you think I am? I got you into this, and I'm going to make it good myself. I'll pay it out of my allowance. All you have to do is raise my allowance for 40 a week. Look, Janie, <laughs> look, I don't even mind the money now, but when the Security Deposit Bank and Loan Company find out I signed that note, they're going to cancel the advertising contract. No, they won't, dear. When he saw your signature, he asked me if you're in the advertising business, and I said yes, and he laughed and said he was glad to have somebody like you handling their advertising. Laughed? Glad? He said he only wished all the other signers that they would be as happy to sign a note as you were. Who told him I was happy? He said he could tell by the way you signed it. He said this was the first time in his experience that a co-signer ever signed a note, sincerely yours, with all my love. Isn't that <laughs> awful? <laughs> And I've lost my little thing that Jane's going to say. So I don't know what she's going to say next week. You never can tell. <laughs> I never tell. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it's been, it's been a good comedy of errors as well tonight. Uh, but uh, we hope you've enjoyed our show. And uh, at this time, I would like to introduce our cast. <laughs> of course, here I am in Denise's frame. Uh, luckily, we were in the same house tonight. The internet just decided to go away from me on the other side of the house. So anyway, I'm here now tonight playing, playing Ace with David Dameron. <laughs> and playing Jane was Miss Connie McDonald. Yay, Connie. <laughs> there she comes. I'm Jane, his awfully of... wedded wife. That's what I was supposed to say. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's what she'll say next Wednesday if you tune in then. All right, playing Arlene and Miss Anderson, the uh, wacky secretary was Denise Klein. <laughs> Oh, get on out of the way. That's it. Oh, boy. Oh, hey, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. And playing Ken and Wilkerson, we have Doug Fain. Come on back, Doug. Playing Miss Martin, the credit check secretary, we had Susan Clements. <laughs> there she is. There she is. And doing our commercials tonight, we have Miss Brett Latham. Uh, hey. Hey. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> She's always busy. She does a multitasker. Anyway, guys, I'm going to turn it over to Doug. But listen, thanks for being here with us tonight. We really enjoyed it. We hope you enjoyed it. And uh, wow, it was just like being on stage, wasn't it? So a few technical difficulties we had to work through. Uh, it was funny. I've, I've been doing Zoom testing all evening with Doug and Dave, and everything was fine, and we decided to go live. And Ooh, boom, there's some glitches. Those old, uh, those old, what do you call them? The gremlins, the uh, internet gremlins got me. So anyway, I'm going to turn it over to Doug. Thanks for being here, guys. Come on in, Denise. We, uh, we, we have to have glitches. The good thing about old time radio back in the days is they didn't have internet that went out. And people did not forget to turn their microphones on. So, you know, that's just part of a learning experience. Folks that tuned in, and we had several... Uh, that waved at us and gave us thumbs up. This was the first time, if you're still watching and you turned in late, this is the first time we've ever attempted to do this live. Uh, all of our other Zooms has been recorded and edited, and we can stop and do it over. So we decided tonight to do it live. And as you see, things happen. Uh, it's just part of being live. Uh, it wouldn't. The things that happened though wouldn't have happened if we'd have been at the studio on the theater because you no. know, it's just it's technology. Now, 
We've got a few minutes here that I hope that you'll stick with us because if you weren't with us at the very first of the show, we want to give you a few announcements here that we that we had then. Um, because of COVID, we have not been able to perform live this year at all. The last live show we did was Christmas last year, and we were all prepared to do our spring show, the Fairy Tale Theater. And it got knocked out, so then we thought, well, we'll do it in the summer. Things will be better. Things didn't get better, and that knocked out. So we thought, well, we'll do it in the fall. In fact, we were supposed to do it this weekend. The night was supposed to be opening night, and we didn't get to do it. And the main reason, we can bring you into the theater with masks. We just can't keep you six foot apart. You know, our theater is not that big. So we decided to wait and do, uh, do it this way. So Denise, though... I'm going to have you once again tell about something that if everything goes right, we are still planning to do live in person, and that's on Halloween night. That is the dinner theater event at First Vineyard. October 31st, the food's phenomenal. People are calling now. It's filling up. It is a limited seated, let me try that again, a limited seating engagement we can only have 75 people and keep everybody apart the way we're supposed to. So if you want a seat, call and let us know. And if you've already uh, reserved a seat, call and let us know that you want it for sure and that you are coming so we can get our menus and everything taken care of. And, you know, this this menu that if you're going to get, folks, uh, I was it's looking phenomenal. at it the other day, and it's absolutely amazing. In fact, if you don't care, I'm just going to read here real quick. What is on the menu that night before our show? You're going to have sliced pork loin with bourbon spiked bacon and red onion sauce, garlic linguine parmigiana, that you get both of those. Uh, the sauces is... are rosemary roasted potatoes, mixed green salad with garden vegetables, a choice of dressings, homemade yeast rolls. Listen to this. You get a choice of desserts. Either a shaker lemon pound cake with wild blackberry sauce or chocolate cobbler with whipped cream, iced tea, citrus water too. Now remember, they can't have anybody come in under 21 because First Vineyard will be selling wine. All right. So you get all of that and then hopefully uh, you'll find us uh, funny. Now what we're going to do that night, we're not going to oh, do sure. the... Um, the uh, what's it, uh, the fairy tale? We're not going to do the fairy tale theater. We're going to wait and do that next spring. But we are going to do a Halloween episode of Father Knows Best and a suspense episode. It's not going to be anything real scary, but something I think you'll enjoy. So that's what we're going to do that night uh, on Halloween night. And now we are, Doug, going to try to do the fairy tale. I'm sorry. Do that again. I said we are still going to try to finish and do the fairy tale theater, hopefully in spring yeah. Yeah. again, because it's too good to not do. We've got lots of special effects and lighting and everything. So we're going to try to just move it to the spring show now. So we hope everybody will come and see us Halloween. As Denise said, uh, we can only seat 75 this time, and we're up to about 45 or 50, so make sure you call her and get that. Hopefully we will be able to do a Christmas show this year. That's our plans. Oh, one more thing. We're going to try to do somewhat of a gospel sing. Some of you may remember last year we had a live gospel sing twice at the Jessman Christian Church. We can't do it there or anywhere because of COVID, but what we're going to try to do, we're having a meeting on this this next week, we're going to try to get eight or ten of our singers to do a mini concert at the theater and have it Facebook Live for you, and then you can call in pledges, kind of like the old-fashioned telethons we used to have, and raise money for the Homeless Education Program at Jessamine County Schools. Uh, we wish we could bring all 400 people back in that church again, but we just can't do it, so maybe next year. But at least we want, here's the thing, we want to try to raise at least something for the Homeless Children Education Program, even if it's a little bit. So we're going to talk to some singers on uh, Monday and or Tuesday or some night next week and try to figure all that out. So be watching for that. Guys, it's been fun. Appreciate y'all helping us out and appreciate everybody out there who's been listening and watching. And David uh, <laughs> is now going to get this video ready and he's going to do YouTube 
and it will also be available here on Facebook. So if you want to watch it over or tell a friend, uh, we would love for you to continue to watch these videos. By the way, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the other videos that we've done, you can see them all if you want on our website. K C A L O T R. Dot, there it is. Hey. The is always prepared. K C A L O T R. There it is. So, everybody, be safe out there. Keep uh, keep healthy. That's the main thing. And some way or the other, KCAL will return to the stage one of these days. Thank you for your support. We're still getting monetary donations, and we appreciate it so much. Thank you all. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. See you in person sometime soon. Come see us in October. We're out.